All right, guys, let's go over the numbering of these fittings real quick so that we know what we're talking about as we go forward. So number one is down here on the bottom, okay? Number one, I don't know if you can see me pointing to it right here. That's number one. Number two is kind of behind this uh, bracket for the alternator, the alternator mount bracket. So that's number two. Number three is up here where we can see it. Pretty good. Then number four is this one sticking out. We'll be removing that. Number five is the, the elbow one. Number six is down behind uh, the elbow one. It's way in the back here, and that is the one that popped out on me, okay? And then number seven is gonna be behind uh, the power steering pump that I have to remove still. And there'll be a separate video on how to remove the power steering reservoir. And then there's the number eight that's back on the uh, heat exchanger for the oil cooler, but uh, we won't be able to reach that one because that's the engine out only. Uh, repair. So anyway, now you know which fitting is which as we go forward. Let us begin. All right, after applying heat for a while and a few different techniques, I'm finding that my fittings do not want to come out. So I am changing the plan. I'm going to put the sealant around the outside edge all the way around and I'm going to pin them. And that is all. Now you will get to see me neural and, and uh, bond the one that popped out, because that one's already out. So I'm gonna bond that one, and you can see the whole process on that one, but I will put some uh, adhesive around the edge. But this video um, is uh, changing <laughs> dramatically. Because <laughs> I guess mine are bonded in pretty good. It, it, they're just not coming out, so I'm not gonna risk damaging anything. So, I'm going to well, let you watch me put the adhesive around the outside, drill, and pin. Stay tuned. Okay, so I've started the first uh, drill on the location number one. And I'm using the drill bit M4 by 0.7. And I've got a lot of Vaseline around the outside to catch the chips. And you'll see a screw sticking out. That screw has a piece of foam on the end so that when I'm done I can pull it out and any chips that are inside small amount of chips that are inside will be pulled out then we will pin this one and I will put some of our uh, my paste form of adhesive around as a flange so here we go <clears throat> through and now I'm going to suck that out with the vac and then I'll pull out the foam. Okay, so the hole's now ready to be tapped, and I have a little tap here I'm going to use. Um, <clears throat> I put a little bit of oil on this tap, but you don't really need to put special oil on this. This is such a small hole, such a little bit of material. So any oil, I mean WD-40, anything, motor oil will be just fine. Just put a little on your tap and tap the hole. You want to do it nice and square, so you want to make sure you're square and steady. Give it good pressure on your start and give it a nice turn. I'm trying to say square and go on down. Tap your hole till it goes all the way through. And then you can put your pin in there. I'm not going to use red Loctite. I'm going to use a uh, the same thing I use on so many other things. I'm going to use the gray gasket sealer because it works really well for me and if I ever want to take these out, I don't want red sealer holding it in there to where I can't get the pin out. And you just tap just like so. 
Okay, the tap went in quite nicely, so we're going to go ahead and take it out now. She has some nice threads there. And I'll test a, a screw in there before I put it in permanently. And I'll just take this out. Pretty deep. Probably went deeper than I needed to. Alright, so here goes my uh, my screw here. Focus, yeah, there it goes. So we're going to go ahead and pre-fit that. See if it'll go in. See if the threads are right. See if they gave me the right screws. Just pre-fit it. And yeah, those threads are nice and clean. And it goes in. And that's what it'll look like once it's all done. Now I'm going to put a flange, a little fillet flange of adhesive around the entire uh, circumference of this pipe to hold it in because I can't get it out. So I'm just going to put additional adhesive on there, pin it, call it good. And then we'll go on to number two. See if we can get a good close up of that. Stay focused, stay focused. And there's my first pin for pipe number one. Next, we'll be pinning pipe number two. We'll drill it. I'll put the foam down in there and then we'll tap it and then we'll go to pipe number three, number four, number five, and then number six we're going to do the knurling and we will do adhesive on that one and then I'll finish taking out the power steering pump and brother four and we'll do number seven. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drill number two, and it's a little odd angle, so I'm going to use the angle, my angle drill for that. Give me a little bit better um, angle. Okay, so let's get a close up of the drill of number two. Here it is. And now we'll just vacuum that one out, tap it, and test fit the screw on it. Okay, so we're going ahead and tap this one, number two, nice and easy. Um, before we use this tab, we went ahead and brushed out all of the shavings from the previous tap. So you have a nice clean tap, and then I put a little couple drops of oil on it again. And then we start nice and slow with good firm pressure and a nice square pressure into the hole so it bites and then you just turn it on through like so now the ones in the back I'm gonna to have to use a, a flexible extension because this isn't gonna fit back there so I'll be using a different uh, tap and a different method for trying to still be doing it by hand I'm not gonna use a power tool or anything to tap it but I will be uh, using a flexible extension and a ratchet. So we'll take that out and press test fit the screw. Number two is tapped. So there's our beautifully tapped number two hole. And let's see if I don't think I can get in there with my fingers. Uh, let me get a an Allen wrench. Let me get an Allen wrench. <laughs> okay, I did go get the Allen wrench, but I'm gonna have to try and put that in with a a magnet. I think it's gonna be a better better bet. Get it started with a magnet. So let's see how this works. There we go, and it goes right on in nicely. And then you can use your Allen wrench. Put it in a little bit more. So this one will be pinned quite nicely as well. No problem. So number one and number two are a go. So let's drill number three. Okay, I've got the Vaseline on number three and a nice little start. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer for you. And now we're going to drill and tap that one. Use the angle on this one too, it's a little bit easier to access. 
Okay, the top's all cleaned up and re-oiled, so let's go ahead and tap number three. I like to wipe them up before I take it out so nothing falls into the hole. All right, number three is tapped, cleaned up. Let's go ahead and test fit the screw. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> All right. Magnet time. Probably should just do it with the magnet, even though I can reach it. That way I won't drop it again. Threads are nice and clean, so it should just it should go in effortlessly, and it does. And there we go. Now number three is done. Take a closer look. Okay, so now we're going to go and we're going to check in the inside of those uh, fittings that we uh, drilled and put the pins in. We're going to see if there's any, pick at least two of them, we're going to see if there's any shavings inside. So let's go nice and slow and look inside these. Let's look inside of this one here. Let's see if it's clean. Let's see what we got here. Looks pretty good. Looks like there's a little something on the bottom. I don't know if that's but I'll wipe that out and see this one here see if you can get a view can't quite get back there you see this one nice and clean there's the screw all right so yeah we, we did a pretty good job see if there's a little piece hanging so here's a peek at that Nut all cleaned up. Here, screw it in. Oh no, there's no piece coming out again. You can see that. I'm gonna screw it down. Go in there and get that little piece right there. I want that going into my water. So there we have it. Let's clean that up right now. Okay, I've roughed up the surfaces with uh, basically just brushed them off with a wire brush. Now I'm gonna go at it with some acetone and just clean the surfaces up and prepare it for. Uh, the adhesive. What I'm using is a little a toothbrush, is actually my toothbrush, so I'm getting a new one. <laughs> but that and a little acetone. I'm just going after all these surfaces. Make sure there's no oil or anything that will keep the adhesive from from sticking. And acetone is good too because it's very volatile. I can just put it on and I don't have to take it off. It'll just evaporate. So go ahead and Using the toothbrush, you can get all the way around these. It's really nice. You can get all the way around up underneath and really uh, get at those surfaces. All right, so to abrade the inside portion of the housing where the fitting popped out, I have some of these from another project foam marshmallows. All right, I'm just going to take one of these foam marshmallows carve it up a little bit and then I'm going to use skateboard grip tape on it and then I'm going to put it on my flexible extension alright stick it in there and turn it a little bit and that's how I'm going to abrade the internal portion of the housing so I'll let you see this in advance so when I do it you know what you're looking at 
All right, I went ahead and put the uh, skateboard grip tape on the little um, marshmallow here and uh, a little bit of T-Rex tape to hold it so we know it won't let go. And our housing hone, we'll call it, is uh, ready for service. Put it on the ex flexible extension and away we go. Put it in, it'll apply a little bit of pressure and we'll rough up those edges so our adhesive has something to hang on to. Not sure how much of this you're going to be able to see, but I'll let you watch. We're going to go ahead and do our hone now. So let's go down there and see what that surfacing job looks like. Well, that's the surface now after we abraded it. And there's little bits of grit in there. We'll go in there again and we'll clean that out. And then we'll be ready to do adhesive bond. The bond will be much better than the original once it's, once it's abraded like this. For cleaning in there, I just basically use shop paper towels taped to a wooden piece of doweling. I just make myself a great big Q-tip and I do a bunch of them and I just go in there until I'm happy with how clean it is. You just go in like so and clean and we should come out, we should have little bits of, of that skateboard grit on there. Uh -huh. See, a little bit of grit. And then I'll do it again until it's clean as I'm, and I'm happy with it. All right, so I'm going to use my little wire camera here. We're going to go down and we're going to look at look at the surface again after cleaning, so we can just basically see what we'll be bonding to. And this is what it looks like. Instead of glass smooth, the surface is going to look like this. Okay, this is what it looks like for bonding. Clean and rough. All right, so now we can put the adhesive on and prepare our fitting with the knurling and putting adhesive on both surfaces. Okay, so now it's time to prep the fitting itself. And there's one thing I wanted everybody to see and notice about the fitting. Look at the way the adhesive is on the fitting. It all came off, 90% of it came off on the fitting, there was none in the housing. And even this portion here where it's missing, it wasn't in the housing. There's nothing in the housing. I looked in there with the camera. It just didn't bond evenly. It squeezed out, so there was nothing there. There was nothing to control the bond line thickness. That's part of the job of the knurling. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean this off with some sandpaper, and then we're going to knurl it right about here, we're going to roll about right about here because we know where the adhesive is and then we're going to put adhesive on this, we're going to put adhesive in the housing and we're going to use our little tool that we made earlier to press that in and then once this is in I'll put another bead of, of the paste type adhesive around as a flange since I uh, can't really reach all the way back there to pin it so let's get on with it <clears throat> I decided to try and use my little tool I made to clean this off, see how it works. A little sandpaper. It's actually working pretty good. I'm almost done. I'm loving it. Look at that. Turn it out pretty clean. Okay, so here is the uh, cleaned off fitting and to be honest with you it has enough roughness on it that we could use it just as it is. But you know me, I decided I wanted to knurl, so I'm gonna knurl. 
So now the moment we've all been waiting for, the knurling. My other knurling tool came. Some of you have seen it already if you're in my group on Facebook, my, my Porsche group on Facebook. But here's the tool and it works very, very simply. You just screw this part up to open the jaws enough to fit whatever size bar or tube, it has to be round, that you want to knurl. And you just put it inside in between these teeth. Now there's little teeth in there and they're going to cut a pattern right where I want it. You have to figure out where you want the pattern located. And I know I want mine pretty close to the end, but I want it in far enough to where I don't see any of it once the fitting is all the way in. So I'm going to tighten this down right about here. Because I left a line where the adhesive was before the, line, the adhesive was about to here. So I'm going to have that, this in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to put it a little bit closer to the end so that I know the neural portion is completely in the housing. Then I just tighten it to where it's, it's making contact because I'm going to be doing it by hand so it doesn't need to be tight. And as you do it, as I do it, you, I can look at it and see how deep the cut is and then tighten it up a little bit more and do it again. Okay, tighten, turn, tighten, turn. And I can just do, I don't need a vise or anything. I can just turn it just like this. Okay, and I'll let you see exactly how that looks. And you can just pretty much turn it just like that. And if I want it a little bit deeper, I turn this a little bit tighter and then I turn my fitting in the knurler, just like that. A little tighter and a little bit more of a turn, just so I can turn it by hand. And when I have them happy with the depth of the pattern, and I think it'll do a good adhesive bond, then I just back it off. And there I have a nicely knurled part that will bond very well with the adhesive inside the housing. Now we'll make up a batch of adhesive and put adhesive on the housing and put adhesive on this fitting and then use our little tool to tap it in. Alright guys, neural job's all done as you saw. Give you a nice close-up of it so you can actually see it because we're going to put the adhesive on now. We'll mix up a batch of adhesive. We're going to put it on both surfaces, housing and fitting, and then we're going to take our tool we made earlier, okay, a little wood to doweling, put it in like so, okay, we're going to put that in, and then we're going to tap this in to the uh, housing. I've already checked it for clearance, so it's clear on this portion, and it does stop on the knurling, so once I press that knurling in, it's going to have a nice, tight, semi-interference press fit. So let's mix up some adhesive. So the adhesive I'm using here is going to be the 7056AL. Do this one. This one comes in a cartridge. Okay, the little thing comes like that. And you just put it into this little cup that they supply. And I think this is the one I'm supposed to use because the other one's way too thick. Yeah. See, yeah, this is the right one. So they told me wrong. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This is the correct one. The other one, we'll use it. It, has, it won't get hard right away. We'll use that for the flanges. That's what it's for. So this one, we're going to mix it with a popsicle stick and we're going to apply it to both surfaces. And there's plenty of it, for, especially for just, just this one. And this is stirred up, stir for about 30 seconds, they say, to a minute. And I don't want to wait too long. I want to get it on there, get that thing tapped in. So let's get over to the car, put some on the fitting, and put some on the housing. We're going to put some on the housing first, and I'm going to use this long stick to get in there and put that on and then we'll apply it to the fitting.
and we'll tap it in. All Throw right, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see, but I'm going to start applying adhesive right now. So here we go. Down, 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 down. I almost had a drip there, and I'm swirling it around nicely. Get a complete cover. I'm going to put a little bit more, and then I'll put the rest on the um, on the fitting. And that looks really good. And I'd show you, but I don't know how much time I have, <laughs> really. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in there, and I'll let you see it when it's done. I will let you see me do the fitting though, because that's pretty easy. Like so. Get this and then we'll put it all the way around. Nice and even. Complete cover. All the way around covering the knurlings. And now I know once this gets in there we have adhesive on both surfaces. It's going to give me a good bond. All right, so let's. And I don't care if it's a little too much. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more. And then. And it'll just squeeze out. Any extra will just squeeze out and make a nice little fillet, which is fine. I'm just going to use my stick like that, just to get it started. Then we'll use our tool and then I'll tap it in with some extensions. So down we go. And that is in very nicely. I'm going to hold it with an extension so I don't pull it out. But it's just lightly in there. We haven't done any tapping or anything yet. So I'll touch here and I'll pull this out because it's kind of snug. There we go. So now I'm going to see a little tool. I'm going to put this in there. Go down and let's see. Uh, get that in, okay. And I also was able to push that in a little bit. We can just tap that in. Nicely. Very good. And we know we didn't damage anything because it's just wood. And the wood cracked, but it's okay. There we go. Okay, so this is number seven. This is a close-up look at the flange. Um, the little fillet that we did. So you can have a peek at what it looks like way back in there. Um, this is the bond that we got. And it looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. You see that the fitting is fully seated. The knurls are gone, disappeared into the housing. And we have a really good a complete fillet around the outside and we know we have good adhesive on the inside on both surfaces and both surfaces are well abraded and cleaned so that's what it should look like this one's not going to come out I'm gonna take a peek inside see what it looks like see if I can get the inside of that and uh, I went in there and I cleaned up a bit See, so there's no residual adhesive blocking or chunks that are going to come loose because I went in there and cleaned it out before it dried. So that's what it looks like. No shards of any kind of adhesive. All right. That is number six. Okay. Coolant pipe um, fitting repair continues. I'm getting ready to drill number four. Okay. So I'm going to take you down. Here is the flexible extension, right here, okay? And it goes down around behind this little bit of wiring harness and then down right here to number four. 
you can see. And I'll be drilling that, tapping that that way. Then I'm going to remove this, the coolant, temp the coolant temperature sensor right here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that coolant temperature sensor. And then I'll take this back a little bit farther and I'll drill the back side here of number five right here. And that will be it. Then we'll be done with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I haven't figured out number eight yet, and I may not be able to do it. So that's number four and number five. There's a little bolt right here. There's a bolt right that goes right here that holds the uh, piece of wiring harness. This piece of wiring harness right that goes up across here like this, it holds that. I took that bolt out right there so that I could move it a little bit to be able to get this uh, flexible extension back there. Just takes uh, about an inch of movement. Okay, there you have it. Okay, I think I can I can let you guys watch me drill this one. And here goes. And I'll go ahead and finish drilling that and then I'll let you watch me tap it. Here's a close up. Okay, we got our hole drilled, cleaned up, everything all vacuumed out. We pulled our little foam out and took the chips from the inside. Now we have our tap set up the same way. Here, same angle. We're going to use the uh, double flexible extensions here. But I'm going to turn that by hand with the little uh, uh, wrench here, my ratchet here. So I'll set you up on the tripod and you can watch me tap it. But that'll be, just know that'll be being turned by hand. Alright, the thread on number four came out really nice. Screw goes in perfectly. We'll get some uh, some sealer on that and, and screw it on down. Now, number five. Okay, on my journey to drill number five that you see in the back there, I removed my diverter valves. And in so doing, I took loose my vacuum connections to different locations on the diverter valve. You'll notice that I numbered them. Number two, number one, okay, and then correspondingly number one goes here on this elbow and then number two goes down here or actually, yeah, number two goes down here on this check valve, okay. Those are breadcrumbs to help you uh, find your way back when you're putting everything back together and minimize the amount of questions you have to ask on the forum. I'm getting ready to take this electrical connector loose. This is a good example. So I label this one 1 1 and 1 1. Then I'll take it loose and I can put this on the bench. Then I'm going to take a loose the temperature, um, the coolant temperature sensor. And there's a electrical connector on the back of that. And let me show you what it looks like on another one. There's another connector just like it because you have to depress a little clip and it's on the back side so you have to pull it towards you. Um, where is it? Here we go. Okay so this is just like the one on the temperature sensor and here it is. This is what it looks like on the back. Okay so you have to push this in. So it would be this way and you have to pull it towards yourself and then put a screwdriver in this little slot here and push up while you're pulling that towards you. But you can't see it. I put a mirror back there in a the flashlight so I can see what it was. All right, so that'll be next. And then I'll be drilling number five. All right, I got the diverter valves out and it's all set up for drilling number five in the back. The little elbow shaped one. I hope you can see that back there. Let's see, see the drill bit? And then this is the flexible 
extension, two of them, and they'll be powered by this drill. So I'm going to try to get the camera on that for you, but I'm not giving any guarantees. So let's get her set with a little bit of oil. We'll get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and start drilling number five. Okay, got her lined up with the tap, and I want let you guys watch me tap number five. Of course, this is done by hand with a ratchet. Back it up to break it off a bit. And go some more, put some oil on it to start with. Just tap it on here. Firm pressure and nice sharp turns. Keep it from getting caught. That looks like it's in pretty good. We'll back it out, clean it up, and put screw in. So I'll let you guys watch me screw number five in. Looking good. There we go. And threads are taking quite well. Got a weird angle. To use a different wrench. All right, guys. Here's a little trick I thought I'd share with everyone um, in terms of how to drill that number six pipe, the one that I already knurled and uh, epoxied. I'm going to use a popsicle stick and I'll show you what I mean. I took this popsicle stick and I cut it all right, into a little piece like so and I drilled it with the same drill that I'm going to use to drill the housing in the car, okay? Now I'm going to take this little piece of popsicle stick I'm going to glue it onto the housing. That will give me a start point. Basically it's an artificial punch location because I can't get back there to punch it or drill it to get the drill bit started. And, you, and it'll be starting at a slight angle. So I don't want to put lateral forces on the bit. I want to be able to just push straight down the shaft and not have it slip out on me. So I'm going to have this thing drill, glued in place and then I'll use this hole to guide my drill so that it doesn't slip or break. Okay? So that's what you'll see in there when I put the little wire camera way in the back. So you can actually see this go into the little piece of wood and you'll know what you're looking at. But this could help you get it started if you plan to do As we all know, the devil's in the details. So here's a detail that I want to share with you to do two things. One, help someone who might be trying to accomplish this same task and also to maybe give someone pause who is not really fully aware of what all it takes in addition to what they see on here because this is just one of the details. Anyway, this is the little slice of, of the uh, popsicle stick that I'm going to use to align the drill. In addition to using the popsicle stick, I have glued a small piece of sheet metal onto it so that I can use that to place it on the housing. The reason I put the little piece of metal on there is so that I can use this bendable wire magnet to go off in there and actually place it. Hold it there until the glue dries and then be able to get it off. This will also help me to fish it out after I tap it off with a screwdriver when I'm done having it magnetized will help me get it out if I drop it. Okay, So that's just one tip 
of many of the details that you kind of have to be able to think on your toes to solve little problems as they come along. And patience. All right, back to the car. So this is how I work on number six with these flexible extensions and the um, little camera, wire camera, and the wire magnets. There it is. Let me see if I can zoom it in on it, on it so you can actually see the hole right, right there. So I'm right off in there is where I'm working. So. Give you guys perspective, it's a ways back. So you can't really see it naked eye. So I watch myself on my phone with the little camera. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to show you the actual drilling, so I'll show you my setup. Got a drill here with two flexible extensions going down, and that is how. I drilled and tapped number seven. If you can see down there, let me let me see here. Number seven, you can see I've started it, and uh, I'm gonna stick um, some foam down the tube with a wire on it so I can pull this, the shavings back out. But this is how I got to number seven. Okay, after I took the power steering reservoir out, as you can see. And if you're wondering how I'm going to tap it after I drill it, this is a special little drill tap combo. So once it drills, it continues on in and taps at the same time. So then all I have to do is put in the screw. Okay, I might be able to get you in there for this last little bit of the drilling. So let's see. Okay, number seven here is drilled and tapped, as you can see. And I'm gonna pull out the wire here. Let's see if I can grab that wire. Oh. And those are my little bits of shavings on that. See a little bit. Right. Not much went in there, but we wanted to pull that out so it's not circulating through our cooling system. Now all I would do is put the screw in and put a little bit of additional adhesive around as a, a little fillet around the edge. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install number seven the screw. I'm just showing you how I'm gonna do it. I'm putting it on a flexible extension and then I can just turn it just like I turned the drill and the tap just like so and I glued it on with a little bit of crazy glue and once the threads go in it'll be easy just to snap that off and uh, before I put it in I'm going to put some gray gasket sealer on the threads a whole bunch of it so it goops up and makes a nice little flange around the top and seals it but I can't show you that so that's why I'm showing you this now so off we go down to install number seven. You're all done with number seven. You can see you have the adhesive all around. You have the pin in. If I can get a better shot of that, it's really hard to get off in there. You can see it this way. There we go. There's the pin. And there's the adhesive around to number seven. Now all we have to do. Just put the 
put the uh, power steering reservoir back in and start buttoning everything up. Sorry about it's like it's dark, it's nighttime out here. Alright, guys, that's it for me. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do number eight, I can't even find it. But I did do one through seven, so here we go. Here's number one. Right down here, done. And number two, peeking out, it's right in there. Of course, here's number three. You guys watch me do number four, get the hose out of the way that goes on number five. And you can see it over here on the left. Right there, number four. Here's number five. That we, we did. You guys watch me do that one. And underneath here is number six in the back where we knurled and press that one in. So there's number six. And number seven is over here behind the air conditioning. I don't know what air conditioning. Well, beside the air conditioning compressor, but behind the power steering. And I don't think you can see it. Can you? Oh, yeah, there it is. There's number seven. And let's hope number eight doesn't pop loose because there comes a time when you need to know your limits. And I don't think I can do that one without taking the engine out. All right, that's how you fix your coolant pipe fittings. Thanks. All right, guys, she's all put together. I'm going to go ahead and do the initial startup. We're going to do a cold start. Let it. Uh, get up to temperature and leave the bleeder valve open on the reservoir so we're getting additional burping out of there and then we may have to top it off so let's see if she starts <laughs> 